All right, Chad Wilson here with All Eyes DB Camp. Today I'm gonna do um, what might seem like a little bit of a weird video to be doing, but I'm doing it anyway, all right? And it's the case against cover four. All these coaches love running it, all right? To be honest, it's a bunch of linebacker coaches. I get it, I understand. I'm just telling you our view from the back half of this thing or the back end of this thing. The majority of safeties and especially cornerbacks hate quarters coverage. They absolutely hate. And I've always had this um, theory and um, this motto. Cover four is not a coverage, it's a defense. Cover four will work for you if that's what it is that you do as a team, all right? Cover four is your primary coverage. Cover four is what you work. You work everything, all your other coverages off of cover four, but the primary thing that you run is cover four and you have a bunch of variations of cover four and it's what you practice all week. It's what you practice a whole bunch in the off season. And then when you get to the game, there are far fewer mistakes. Now there are mistakes in every coverage, but I have not seen more big plays given up in any other coverage than cover four. And to highlight that today, I'm gonna to talk about a play that I put up on my Instagram page, at all eyes DB camp. You should be following it at all eyes DB camp. If you're on Instagram, you should be following that right now. But I'm gonna use this play that I put up here on uh, Instagram. I'll often put a play up and ask guys what coverage would they run against the particular play. And with this particular play that I put up, I got a couple of answers that people said run cover four and I don't like it. I'm gonna tell you why, all right? To this side, okay, and basically, let me just talk about the play real quick. Let me just rub this out. Pause. Anyway, here's the play. It's a basic concept. It's usually designed to attack one high coverages if you lack a little bit of discipline. I'm not saying you shouldn't run one high against something like this if you're expecting to get it, but for those of you that like cover four, I'm gonna tell you why it's not a really good concept. Again, unless cover four is your thing that you do, all right? You don't just pop cover four out and run it. It's just, again, my theory, it's been my experience. You don't just pop cover four out and just run it at some odd point in the game. It better be something you're extremely good at and have repped a ton in practice. Anyway, there's a concept. You've got a shallow by the slot right here, designed to put this guy in conflict, a little bit of eye candy for your middle linebacker. All right, you've got a dig at about 10 to 12 yards here, maybe even deeper sometimes, but 10 to 12 by this tight end. And behind it, you've got a post route. All right, we all know what a post route is. And then you get a corner route here where he attacks, he attacks this seam area, ducks it back out here. Maybe we get this guy to not be in a third if he's supposed to be there, or we can out leverage a free safety um, or whatever safeties on this hash and drop a ball in there behind it, so on and so forth. All right. So for those of you who would tell me cover four is something you want to run against this, I'm going to tell you the reasons why that might not be the greatest thing in the world for you to do. Okay. Um, and I, I, I tend to think there are guys out there that just want to say cover four to virtually anything that has been put out there. You just like cover four, all right? I'm going to tell you the problem with it. Okay, on this side, you may be all right, okay? You're going to lose the threat of number two here. And for those of you that are kind of new to the game of football, when you, when you hear a coach talking about number two, he's counting from the outside in as, as to the number of receivers. So this would be number one. He's the widest guy, number two. And if this guy were to come here, he'd be number three. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say that. Not a jersey number, not talking about a jersey number. Okay, so you're gonna lose the threat from number two early, all right? That's gonna make this read and cover for kind of easy for that guy, all right? Kind of easy for him. So. We know in cover four, when there's no threat from two, you get this double team on one, okay? Free safety's eyes, if he's got a guy going underneath 10 yards or less, five yards, in this case, really early, he can now get his eyes over here and hit this double team with the cornerback who has, has quarters, okay? He could press it or he could just zone off to his quarter, all right? Because that's why we call it cover four. And this free safety will can start working his way off the hash here, and we can get a double on this guy. That's great. You get that all taken care of, all right? Um, your nickelback or your, you know, whatever slot defender, whatever you want to call him here in your particular defense, 
He's gonna be fine here. He's gonna lose the threat from two and he's gonna work his way up here, all right? Once again, we've got this corner out ultra covered. Two guys bracketing this corner out, and then we've got a guy underneath him. The corner out is dead. The problem's not here. The problem's going to be on this side of the field, okay? And here's where free safeties and uh, here's where safeties and cornerbacks hate this coverage, okay? In most cases, when cover four or quarters is not your defense, it's not the thing that you do. A lot of times you play this guy outside leverage, and he's got a quarter, okay? And depending on what happens inside with this one, your corner can get a double with this guy, just like I talked about over here, all right? In this particular case, though, this is kind of a cover four beater to this side of the field. Remember I told you this was going to be at about 10 to 12 yards, okay? This means now, once this guy has gone 10 yards plus, that means this strong safety now has him, all right? And here's the problem for this guy. This guy hates this coverage the most. Corners hate the coverage the most, followed by the safeties, because the safeties have to sit here and wait and wait and wait, figure out what this number two guy coming at him is going to do. And if he's coming straight at him or he covers 10 yards, like I said, you're not man-to-man -man on a guy, all right? You don't know pre-snap if you're man-to-man -man on him. At some point in a route, as a guy is running at you full speed, you have got first the added pressure of, Covering an athlete, and then this added pressure of not knowing whether I'm zoning off or I'm covering this guy man-to-man. -man. So somewhere in the middle of a play, going full speed, you may end up being man-to-man -man on a slot guy or a tight end guy that's uh, probably a, a tough matchup for you in many cases. Okay. Nevertheless, after 10, this strong safety must now be lined to this dig route. Okay. He's going to get some kind of help here from this Mike, but he's got that guy man-to-man. -man, all right. This guy is going to work his way, possibly after a reroute, maybe, depends on what you guys do in your cover four, and then kind of work himself out here to ear. I forgot this route, which is what I did in there, swung this guy out. So when he gets out here and there's no real threat anywhere else, he can kind of eyeball this and get ready to rally up to that if that's what the quarterback decides to do. Here's the big problem, though. This guy is reading two, and like the safety is not sure if he's going to get help on this route or not. Not sure. And if he's playing outside leverage, when this guy breaks for that post, he better be world class. If this guy's got any amount of speed whatsoever, this is going to be a losing proposition trying to race this guy to the post. All right? Going to be tough. All right? And any good quarterback is going to probably put that ball somewhere over here. Maybe not even really throw it to the post. He's going to tr throw it over here and make it a race between this guy and that guy. And that's one of the biggest reasons why this guy hates that coverage. First of all, I don't know if I had this guy man-to-man. -man. I'm not sure. And if it turns out that I do, I'm probably going to realize that after this guy's already broken to the post, and now it's a full-on foot race to the post or maybe somewhere over here to the hatch. In this particular case with a corner route, with a high route over here, maybe the quarterback's limited in how far this side of the field he can put the ball, but even if it's to the post and this guy's got any amount of speed whatsoever, it's a tough deal. Yes, I can put the corner inside leverage. Sure, I can do that. That just opens up some other things. Just opens up some other things that I could talk about later. But in this particular concept where guys will wanna run cover four, um, they're going to play outside. Okay, they're playing outside, and then this is the big problem. You lose this potential double team with the strong safety, and now we've got a foot race here. And like I said, this guy better be better have some serious speed. He better read it on time, or he's going to lose, and this is going to be a big play. And these are the kind of plays that goes for touchdowns. I've seen it over and over and over at all levels, high school, college, and pro, this kind of play Bomb, post, giving up for a touchdown. And it's usually having to do with that. This guy's indecision. This guy's indecision and the fact that he's out leveraged. All right? Teams that tend to play this guy with inside leverage have different variations of quarters that they would like to run. And, okay, you might be okay. That's why I say quarters is good if that's your defense, not some coverage that you whip out every now and then. Because the chances of guys screwing this up... Um, is great okay not to mention when you get this kind of route combination and guys get confused as to whether they were zoned off or chasing that post it's just a lot going on post snap 
and I've, if I was going to break it down as to why cover four is not the greatest coverage in the world, as some guys think it is, is that there's too much going on post-snap for these guys in the secondary. Too much thinking going on. You go from thinking to now having to be this really, really great athlete. I'm in zone, I'm in zone, I'm in zone. Now I'm in man on routes taking it way up the field. Okay. Now there are other coverages where you might be zone early and it turns to man late. But in cover four, there's just so much pressure on it. There's just so much pressure on it. Not to mention when this, this strong safety, who typically is not as good an athlete as the cornerback, gets routes like this, gets those kind of routes. Or he ends up with a, you know, you know, let's say, if you guys can still follow along, I've got a bunch of, of lines here, but let's say you get a real good athlete here in the slot and this guy ends up having to be um, full, um, you know, man to man on him because the route goes 10 yards deep. What happens when you start getting this, this, and that? You saw Jerry Judy do that in um, a championship game against Clemson a couple of years ago. Completely um, spun the, the safety around, turned out to be a big play, all right? You guys just study that up. Watch how many big plays happen. You go back and look at the coverage, and a lot of times it's, it's cover four. And cover four has become this in vogue thing that everybody wants to run over the last couple of years. And I'll tell you right now, in my lifetime, okay, and I'm getting up there in age a little bit, Offenses have never been more successful in packing on yards and points and touchdowns as, as they have been in the last few years. And I'm not blaming that all on people wanting to run cover four, but I'm just telling you, it really hasn't helped, hasn't slowed anyone down. All right. A lot of cover four ran in the college football 2020 season, and I saw more points scored, more big plays and more fun being had by offenses than ever before. All right, so you guys that want to just go to the clinics and you see cover four and they really explain it and everything looks great. I'm just telling you in the mindset of these guys back here who I train, all right, at all levels and talk to, they don't like it. All right, they just don't like it. More videos to come on what an alternative can be to this particular concept. And by just using this one play offensively, I get to talk to you guys about some of the benefits of some of the other coverages. All right. I have other coverages that I like. Again, it's a personal preference, but more on that late, um, you know, on some later videos. OK, I'll see what you guys' reactions are to this. A um, couple of questions for you guys out there. What would you run against this? OK, what would you what would you like against it? Feel free to say quarters. You can argue against me on this. I'd like to hear you guys that love quarters. What are some variations that you could play against this or that you have played that would eliminate some of the things that I talked about being a problem? on this. All right. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And this may be a series that I uh, start having here on uh, this YouTube channel. All right. We start talking about different concepts and coverages that can be run against it. And what's the mindset of these guys in the back end of it? Because I'm going to tell this to you right now, all of you defensive coordinators that may be watching this, you may have been a D line coach or play D line. You may have played linebacker or you've been a linebacker coach. I'm here to tell you this. This is the way that it works. If whatever you're running doesn't work back here, it doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work. Because when these guys back here don't get it and mess up, touchdowns, big bombs, big, big bombs, a lot of points, and big plays that turn games around, all right? Again, if you guys like the video, give it a like and a share. I want to hear your comments on this. I'm sure there's some rebuttals to this, especially you guys that love quarters and cover four. Go ahead and drop a comment and by all means subscribe because I've got more content similar to this and, um, and other kind of things having to do with coverage coming up on this channel. So subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, as always, all eyes DB camp. Consistency breeds results.